And I was going to say maybe it's different in the States, but I don't think it really is. I mean, I think that, you know, uh, th there are ways that we, we move and we do foreground different subjects. But I think one of the things that I've had most fun and I think kind of productive debate with students has been on precisely one of those issues where there's not a right answer. Um, and an absolutely standard central classical text in our curriculum, you know, Cicero and Catiline. Now, I remember when I was taught Cicero and Catiline when I was an undergraduate, I thought it was really boring, right? You know, um, I never quite saw then, because I was too young, I think, that, you know, the, the virtues of Sallust Catiline and the Catilinarian conspirators were just on our own. It took me about 20 years to see that this was the absolute central text and incident that had never left Western culture about the nature of um, the rights of the individual versus this protection of the state, um, to which there is no right answer. You know, as that um, how far should the state go to protect itself um, against what we would now call terrorism. Um, and how far how far is it legitimate to suspend human liberty in order to protect the state? Now, if you get undergraduates reading Cicero's Catalinarian speeches and Salas Catiline, and you plant that question in their head, they'll be off for an hour. And it's not, there isn't a the right answer. Um, so I think that I mean, I think that things float a bit, and I think that people pick up new and different subjects. Um, but I, I, I don't think we avoid the, the 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 answerless questions. I think that we probably are rather good at saying these questions are important because they are answerless. <laughs>